Hello everyone and welcome to our first Maroon Print Assembly. My name is Cresta Richardson and I'm the Vice President of the Queensland Teachers Union. I'm one of your three co-chairs for this evening for the summit along with Benny Bowl from the Queensland African Communities Council and Reverend Jeff Hoyt from the Anglican Church. We will introduce ourselves a bit more soon but we want to start with an acknowledgement of country. We take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional owners on the lands that we meet today. I am on the Yagara and Turrbal land here in Brisbane. And can I please ask you to go to the chat function and write the name of the traditional owners where you are so that we can acknowledge them also. We'd like also to pay respect to elders past and present and emerging. We recognise that sovereignty to this land has never ceded. We acknowledge Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are with us today. Now, there are three of us, there are four of us in the room, but we're going to swivel the uh, computer. So bear with me while I hand out to Benny Boll. Thank you very much, uh, Krista. My name is Benny Boll, and I'm the president of the Queensland African Communities Council. I, I came to Australia on a humanitarian visa in 2007 and uh, settled in Queensland. Spent my first year working uh, on the farm in Queensland. So I work on Mandevra, uh, St. George, um, uh, Stansov, and also uh, Walangara. So I do the work that I do because it's important to understand the system. I lead a community, a new emerging community with a lot of challenges. So it's important for us to engage with the system, understand how the system works, and that's why it's important for me to be involved in the alliance. <coughs> So this assembly is an action of the Queensland Community Alliance. Our alliance bring together 35 member organizations representing 1.7 million Queenslanders. We organize our members and communities to act for the common good. We are church, mosque, other faith groups, trade unions, community organization, and ethnic uh, associations. We use a model of community organizing Community organizing is democracy in action. Winning victories that change lives, transform communities, develop leadership, and strengthen civil society. We know that when we act together, we can achieve things we each cannot do on our own, which is why can we come together up? in this alliance. However, we also know that civil society needs to be stronger in order to bring our shared values to life in public sphere. We train and develop leaders and support organizations to do this. We are building the civil society of the 21st century. Now I hand over to Chris. Thank you, Hi again, Chris Richardson, Vice President of the Queensland Teachers Union. This is part of my story. In 1990, I graduated from boarding school from the Cathedral School in Townsville. This time happened to be about the start of the last recession that Australia had. I was going to work for a couple of years in my hometown of Mount Isa before going to university. However, due to the recession, people were postponing their retirement plans and jobs for young people just weren't happening. So around that time, University offers had just come out and I was offered a first round in entry into teaching at James Cook University in Townsville. I was lucky. I had access, support and an ability to go to university and complete my degree. And I've now been a proud state school teacher for more than 20 years. A great deal of that time has been spent, te spent teaching in Emerald in central Queensland. However, some people were not as lucky as I've been. Some of my friends and peers have not had the same opportunities. Unemployment, casual or temporary employment, ongoing insecure employment. It has been hard going for many people and is now sadly accepted as how many people work in Australia. We have seen starkly the impact of these past decisions on people today in our community every day. Long lasting decisions now have to be made with the Queensland community at the forefront. If we do not have secure quality jobs in Queensland, what is the future going to be for our young people of today? 
should they have to bear the brunt of poor decision making in a post COVID world? This alliance is exciting and powerful because we bring together people and organisations that don't normally talk together, let alone work together or act together. We embrace this tension, but to do so, there are some rules. And I am a teacher, so rules are what we do. We treat the person we are negotiating with with respect. This means no booing, no rude or inappropriate signs, no abuse or partisan comments in the chat. We will have a team monitoring this. If you don't follow this rule, you can be warned or removed from the meeting. If you see someone acting inappropriately, please use the chat message to private message Dave Copeman, or if you have a pen nearby, if you could text Dave on 0408 841 595. We will seek commitments both from ourselves and from our opposition leader. And we will ask the questions to be clear and accountable on what these commitments are. We will keep on time. Time discipline is important for us. We demand it of our leaders who speak, and we also demand it of the person we are negotiating with. In this case, the opposition leader. To make sure this assembly runs smoothly and effectively, we have a few housekeeping points. Please keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking. There will be time in the agenda for you to get to know one another and to share stories in small groups. However, when in the large group, treat the speakers as if they are on the stage presenting. Staying on mute will ensure that we can hear all, that we can all hear clearly our speakers and participants. The mute button is located on the bottom left-hand corner and looks like a microphone. Please keep your video on if you can. It helps to build connection and it also makes it easier for us to chair. The chat function. There will be times, like we've already asked, that we encourage you to use the written chat function. At the bottom of your screen, there should be a speech bubble icon, which will open the chat box for you to type into. Please change your screen name, if you haven't already, to include your organisation. There should be three dots when you hover your mouse over the top right-hand corner of your screen. When you click on them, you should be able to rename yourself. There will be times when we ask you to give a thumbs up or a clap to react to a question. You can find the reaction buttons on the bottom right of your Zoom screen. Annie Humphreys is our timekeeper today. As mentioned, we keep strictly to time. Annie will hold up warning signs and then make this sound. Internally, externally, uh, if a speaker is going beyond their time. Matt Vaughan is our tech support for this event. If you have any tech issues during the summit that you need assistance with, please send a message to Matt in the chat or just look for Tech Matt Bourne. Just a reminder that we are recording this event. It is also being live streamed on Facebook Live. We are still running, learning about running events such as this online, so please bear with us if we have technical issues, like turning the laptop to the next speaker. <laughs> Hi folks, my name's Jeff Hoyt and I'm the uh, parish priest of the Anglican Parish of Logan. Uh, I'm also on the Anglican Diocesan Council, the Anglican National Synod, and I'm something called an Archdeacon, if that means anything to anybody. I'd like to, I guess, say why I'm involved in the Queensland Community Alliance, and I have been now for about six years. When I was new to being a priest, about the time Cresta was graduating from high school, I was in a provincial town, and there had been a play group for the children of the women who are in the local women's refuge and it folded uh, because there was no one to auspice it and run it. So I and some women from my church talked to people from the Department of Communities and people from the women's refuge and we restarted a play group for the children of the women in the women's refuge where they could be safe, have fun and learn some life skills and some personal safety skills. Last time I was back in that provincial town, a couple of years ago, 20 years after we restarted it, it was still going, doing just that. In the time I've been a priest, uh, in various provincial towns, small towns, urban contexts, I've found that when the Christian people, the religious people talk together, um, we find ourselves lighting a candle 
uh, and saying that we've begun to change things because we're changing ourselves. And I've noticed that when we talk to people from different partner organisations and do things together, we just get more done. Going back to when I was in that provincial town, Jesus was pretty clear about who we should keep an eye out for. And if we hadn't had partner organisations, we wouldn't have been able to do what we were able to do to keep some kids safe back in that provincial town. I just want to give you some background on what we're doing, what our aims are tonight. As Queensland emerges, hopefully continues to emerge from uh, the COVID shutdown, um, as businesses restart and as communities begin again to connect and uh, my church will be beginning uh, to come back into church and worship again this coming weekend. As we do that, there's never, I think, been a more important time to make sure that Queensland re-emerges as a healthy community with sustainable economic activity and inclusive for all. As leaders in the Alliance, we look back to modern history and it seemed to us that after World War II, uh, there was a push to win the peace, having won the war to win the peace, and that the win the peace movement and idea really came from the community and then was given to government for government to action. And we think that the Queensland Community Alliance can have a similar role today, uh, developing an agenda to give to government for government to action. So this assembly has three aims. Hopefully you've all got access to the maroon print for Queensland reconstruction. Aim one is to present our maroon print for Queensland reconstruction and to seek commitments on its vision and its nine practical principles. Aim two is to develop an ongoing accountable and public relationship with between our alliance and Deb Frecklington as leader of the uh, LNP, the Alternative Government of Queensland. And I should say that, uh, welcome to Deb Frecklington uh, again on behalf of all of us. Aim three is to demonstrate who we are as an alliance and our capacity to be a different, to do a different kind of organising, bringing such disparate groups together. The agenda you have in front of you, do you have the agenda? Hopefully. Um, uh, via the link in the chat is designed to achieve those three aims, uh, but we can't do it without your participation and discipline. So can I ask everyone to endorse our agenda? You can do this by giving a thumbs up, either with your actual thumb or with your virtual thumb using the reaction button in the right hand, bottom right hand corner of your screen. So please give a thumbs up if you would like to endorse our agenda tonight. I can only see a few thumbs because I think Matt has got himself pinned. Looks like lots of thumbs. So thank you, it's good to have buy-in. And now we're going to go on with our agenda. So I'd like to introduce Marlon Brand, who will do the roll call of our member organisations here. Thank you, Marlon. Hello, everyone. My name is Marlon Brand. I lead the International Student Ministry in the Latin American Catholic community, which is part of the Archdiocese of Brisbane. I mentioned my role because like all of you, I have come here not just as an individual, but as a member of a, of a civil society. Gathered here tonight, we are leaders in organi of organization that represents over 2 million Queenslanders. And we want to recognize now these organizations and demonstrate the organized strength and diversity of civil society that is gathered here. As I'm reading out these organization names, I invite you to write your name and organization in the chat. If you have not done, some, some, uh, done that. And when I say your organization name, please hold up to the camera the symbol that you have brought with you. My, the symbol of my organization is, and the cross. So hold that up and give us a wave. All right. Firstly, we recognize the members and leaders of Queensland Community Alliance members organizations. Be ready. Amnesty International Australia, 
Anglican Parish of Logan, ASRC, Brisbane, Australian Conservation Foundation, Australian Youth Climate Coalition, Catholic Archdiocese of Brisbane, Center Care Brisbane, Community Queensland, Community Legal Centers Queensland, Democracy in Color, Electrical Trades Union, Islamic Council of Queensland, Independent Education Union, Islamic Shia Council of Queensland, Logan Community Group Alliance, Multicultural Australia and Cultural Community Leaders, Mangrabat Community Center, Presentation System, Sisters, Queensland Conservation Council, Queensland Nurses and Midwife Union, Queensland Council of Unions, Queensland Program of Assistance to Survivors and Church Torture and Trauma, Queensland Teachers Union, Rail, Tram and Bus Union, Social Responsibilities Committee, Anglican Diocese of Southern Queensland, St. Bart Anglican Church, Magravat, <clears throat> St. Maximilian Kolb, Catholic Parish, Logan, Southside United Church, St. Mary's in Exile, United Workers Union, United Church, Bremer Presbytery, United Church, Queensland Synod, Wesley Mission, Queensland. Wow, look at all that. And in addition to our members of organizations, there are other organizations who have endorsed the maroon print for Queensland reconstruction. If you're from one of these organizations, please hold up your symbol when I call your organization name. And please put your name in the organization chat if you haven't done so. National Retail Association, Queensland African Community Council, the Wilderness Society, Ethnic Communities Council of Queensland, Anglican Diocese of North Queensland. We also welcome and recognize the other organizations who are here with us tonight acting together for the common good. Please hold up your symbol when I call your organization. Australian Christian Churches, Queensland 1G Multicultural Communities, Queensland Baptist, Roninha and Refugee Support Group Australia, Queensland Youth Services, Anta Queensland. If you're from, if you are from any other organization that we have missed, please write your name and organization in the chat. So let's all give a thumbs up if you think that this is an impressive list. Thank you, Marlon. I now hand over to Karen Dare, Bishop Keith Joseph and Sandra Eels for our questions of commitment to each sector. Each of them will ask a question and if you agree, we invite you to unmute and answer, we do. So hello everybody. It's Karen Dare here. I'm the CEO of Communify Queensland. Community organisation representatives, I ask for your commitment and response. We community organisation leaders are from charities, service providers, ethnic organisations, neighbourhood centres and action groups. As community organisation leaders of Queensland, we build identity, resilience and capacity for action. Do you commit to express your community values through listening to the causes of pressures people face, developing positive solutions and holding political decision makers to account for delivering? We do. 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 Bishop Keith Joseph. 
Right. Um, good day. My name is Bishop Keith Joseph. I'm the Anglican Bishop of North Queensland and uh, greetings from Townsville. Faith organisation representatives, I ask for your commitment and response. As faith leaders of Queensland, we believe in love of God and love of neighbour. Because of this, we have deep connections in our communities across the state. Do you commit to express your faith in God by listening to the causes of precious people face, by developing positive solutions and holding political decision makers to account for delivering? We do. 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 Thank you. Hi, my name's Sandra Eels. I'm the Assistant Secretary of the Queensland Nurses and Midwives Union. Union members and leaders, I ask for your commitment and response. As union leaders, we believe in solidarity for social justice. We collectively stand up for fairness, equality and opportunity in workplaces and communities the length and breadth of Queensland. Do you commit to express your union values by listening to the causes of precious people face, developing posit positive solutions, and holding political decision makers to account for delivering? We do. 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 Now we know who is here from our diverse civil society in Queensland. We now recognise the elected leaders and invited guests who are with us today. Mrs Deb Recklington, Queensland Leader of the Liberal National Party, Leader of the Opposition. Welcome. Thank, and you. Dr. Thank you. And Dr Christian Rowan, Shadow Minister for Communications and Shadow Minister for Disability Services uh, and Seniors. Welcome. Thanks very much and thank, thanks for having me. We have also invited guests from Hall Payne Lawyers from our Friends of the Alliance program. They make a generous contribution to support the work of the Alliance. Uh, we are now moving to interview the Queensland Community Alliance in more detail, especially to present how we work to the opposition leader. The goal of our Alliance is to strengthen civil society across Queensland. Only with a strong organization will we be able to improve our ability to advocate for the values and concerns shared by the member of our congregations, unions, and community organizations. I'm now going to explain four principles about how we work. Number one, our alliance stick to the iron rule of community organizing. Never do for others what they can do for themselves, never. We believe in people's agency recognizing their ability to collectively develop solutions to problems they face, but also recognizing the responsibility of our organization to train, home, and develop people to do this. Number two, our action comes from listening, not from ideology. We practice and, and teach a community organizing cycle which is on your screen now. We practice and teach, sorry. We begin by sharing stories of precious on our families. We develop positive solutions and we involve hundreds of people in taking public action to negotiate transparently with decision makers. We always look for practical, pragmatic solutions. Importantly, we are strictly nonpartisan. We work with political representatives of all flavors to achieve the outcomes our community needs. And we hold politicians to account to achieve this. We see respectful, ongoing and accountable public relationships with all serious political leaders. We do not endorse political parties or allow them to join our alliance. We do honor our commitment to work with leaders that honor their commitment to us. Our core funding is membership fees paid by member organization. We do not seek 
or accept government funding. This allows us to politically independent, to be politically independent and accountable to our members. I'm now going to hand over to Reverend David Baker, moderator of the Uniting Church, Queensland. Uh, Reverend David will present why the church is involved in the Alliance. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Benny. Um, and welcome, uh, 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 opposition leader. It's great to have you with us and meeting with us. So the key aspect of the Alliance, as Benny said, is that the broad-based, community-based, uh, membership-based uh, organisations collaborate together with their members uh, on issues that we have in common. So it is about listening to the people in our communities, hearing stories of struggle and responding to them. As Benny said, the iron rule is never do for someone what they can do for themselves. And I think that's a very Queensland value. That's how we become the state we have with that level of kind of self-resilience and fixing things. So it is about citizen and community-based organisational empowerment. So in the Uniting Church here in Queensland, we're committed to the Alliance because it is such a strong fit to our beliefs and a strong fit to our history of uh, Christian faith in action right across the state. But whether Church of Uniting Care, of Blue Care, of the Wesley Hospital, St Andrews Hospital, Wesley Mission Queensland, Lifeline, community services right across this state from Thursday Island to Birdsville and Charleville uh, to Coolangatta. And uh, we're the second largest employer in the state uh, and we have a network of about 30,000 people in our worshiping life, gone up to about 90,000 with Facebook and online. But we see this alliance as being a core vehicle uh, in restoring the social capital, that the communal resources uh, of our life as Queenslanders. So our interest is in concrete action that benefits the long-term health and well-being of Queensland. We also hold to values of self-reliance and building capacity in people. So it's not about asking government to do everything for us. It's about how we as community-based organisations, faith groups, unions, business and government work together and contribute to the health and wellbeing of Queensland. For me personally, it was about hearing the families in the Brisbane Valley wanting better local care for their parents. And so we set up uh, Blue Care and uh, set up an aged care home there. We did that in collaboration with the families, with people like Seymour's Toyota in uh, Tagulawa, the local real estate agent, the local, uh, the local doctor. Sorry, Reverend David, you've got 30 seconds to finish your... 30 Thanks. seconds, oh wow. 10 seconds. So, 10 so seconds. it was about us working together uh, to do those things, to build uh, a better quality community in the Brisbane Valley. So it's those things. Uh, 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 Sorry, Reverend David, time's over. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Reverend David. We will now see a video that tells the story of the three of our local district, the leadership that is developed and the outcome achieved. Hello, I'm Anne Fox. I'm a tenant and advocate for the Church of Christ. I live in Ipswich in Queensland. I became involved with the Alliance because I am sick and tired of not being listened to. In Ipswich, we, the Queensland Community Alliance, decided to work on access to mental health after hearing stories from people who were dropping through the cracks. We approached the hospitals and the doctors and they agreed to work with us. We were granted $270,000 for a collective impact project. Through Churches of Christ, I have been challenged to do things I thought I could never do. I co-chaired an assembly of 100 people with the leading mayoral candidates in Ipswich. We asked them to confirm their commitment to working with us on the Mental Health Collective Impact Project. I think democracy only works if people get involved. We have to hold politicians to account. If I can do it at 70 years of age, surely you can. My name is Michelle Bayard and I'm a delegate for my union together. I'm a mother of four kids and I'm a social worker at the Prince Charles Hospital. I stepped up to be a leader uh, for my union when my boss and my organiser saw something in me that wanted to make a difference. 
I became a part of the Alliance when I found out that um, unions, churches and local organisations were meeting together and listening to community members about the problems they were facing. One of the big things that were really hurting people was the cost of parking at Prince Charles. Families that had cancer and heart disease that were really struggling at the local Catholic Church. We had a meeting with over 200 people and we decided to take action on this issue. We met with hospital management and the management of the car park. We decided together that we could introduce concessional parking at Prince Charles. This began in May of this year. Then in July, the Minister for Health, Cameron Dick, announced a statewide rollout of concessions based on the model that we started at Prince Charles Hospital. Getting together with other people in the community that cared about the issues, uh, getting training, it just enabled me to be a part of something where we could really make a difference and that's what happened. We were able to change things for patients at Prince Charles Hospital. We were able to help them to access the hospital and that was a great win for them and that's why I'm part of the Alliance. My name is Christine Lapa Lapa and I'm a member of the St Maximilian Colby Catholic Parish. I'm a married working mother of three and I am very proud to be a member of the Queensland Community Alliance. I got involved in the Alliance because of the inspiration of my late grandmother, who always found time to give back to her community. We started in Logan. Churches, unions and community organisations got together to explore the importance of community organising. In 2014, we listened to stories of pressures that our community were facing and the issues were transport and safety. We started organising and we turned out 300 people and won commitments from our Logan City Council and state government. Every mayoral candidate promised to fund public transport in Logan and Mayor Luke Smith honoured his promise. Minister Jackie Trad announced trials for demand responsive transport and Australian first. Soon after, Minister Cameron Dick announced funding for three maternity hubs in Logan. We have demonstrated that we are a persistent, non-partisan, people power alliance. We're just getting started, but already we've won things that people thought were too hard. Now we are going to take the next step. Just imagine what we are going to achieve together. In addition to the outcomes you just had in the video, one other key win include a well-leading social prescribing network to address loneliness and social isolation in the Mount Gravatt area. Thanks, Penny. We now welcome to our virtual stage the leader of the Liberal National Party and Queensland Opposition Leader, Deb Frecklington. The first set of questions is focused on establishing an ongoing relationship and accountable relationship between you and the Alliance. Deb Recklington, we recognise that under your leadership, the LNP has increasingly engaged with the Alliance to the stage where you are here tonight at this assembly. Tonight, you have heard more about how our Alliance and how we operate. Could you please introduce yourself by sharing the following question, uh, a response to the following question. Can you share a story of a specific experience in your own life that helps expl explain why you are engaged in public life? Now, your task is you have 90 seconds. <laughs> thank you, and thank you so much uh, for having me as part of this group tonight. It's been really fascinating so far. So look, there's many stories, but probably the one that I'd like to talk about the most is uh, my work as a local lawyer in Kingaroy, uh, which is a regional town, uh, and this is pre-politics, of course, and myself um, and the local head of police in Kingaroy and one of the nurses from the hospital, uh, we all got together after meeting very regularly um, at court because I did a lot of pro bono domestic violence work uh, as the only female lawyer in Kingaroy at the time. Um, we got together and we started the suicide prevention group um, a group that um, was had its main focus at the time was to get a safe room in the King Ray Hospital uh, and assist the staff um, when people were presenting, um, usually because of um, 
uh, drugs or when they're in the middle of an episode. So we started the Suicide Prevention Group. I'm very proud of it. We're celebrating our 10 year uh, this year. And, um, but that really gave me a launch pad into advocating on behalf of my region uh, and behalf of my area. Because at the time we just had uh, not much mental health funding. We were facing a suicide a week effectively, um, even though it wasn't being reported like that. So um, I'm, I, that's my story. I'm just really pleased that I had that background before politics because it really opened my eyes. Thanks, opposition leader, for almost getting there in 90 I seconds. I tried. I tried. <laughs> you, you did. Um, we also have uh, three questions about our alliance relationship with you. Will you commit to an ongoing accountable public relationship with our alliance as organised civil society? Will you come to an assembly with our alliance before the state election? And thirdly, will you personally meet with a smaller delegation of alliance leaders at least twice between now and the assembly? Again, 90 seconds. <laughs> Okay, well, th yes. Uh, so, look, I first met with, um, I think it was Reverend David Baker, and thank you for promoting uh, Tagulawa and the, uh, the Brisbane Valley as well. Um, Peter Forday and Vivian uh, Dugan back in 2018 with Dr. Christian Rowan, who I know is there tonight. Uh, Dr. Rowan, um, went and has, has attended one of your assemblies and has given me, I think at least one, and has given me quite good feedback. I know at the one he attended, he committed uh, to working with the Alliance around policy solutions for vocational training uh, to support the NDIS. Uh, at that night, he also committed for me to attend and, and here I am, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, that I am uh, attending tonight and I'm happy to do so upon request uh, before the election again. Uh, if it was not for COVID, I was intending to visit a couple of your um, successful initiatives that are in, um, I think the areas that I was heading towards were Aspley and Mansfield. Uh, but unfortunately COVID has put a stop uh, to those visits, but I would uh, very much um, like to uh, have a look at some of those initiatives. And I just want to congratulate uh, the three ladies that spoke, particularly uh, the lady from Ipswich, they're just fantastic uh, outcomes for mental health in the Ipswich region. Uh, and I just um, am pleased to be here. So yes, is the Thank answer. Thank you, opposition leader. We look forward to working with you. So I heard you say that you were going to have a successful follow-up um, after COVID as to some of the successful ones and uh, that you have committed to working with us post here. So we're certainly uh, pleased that you're with us tonight and could make those commitments. So we'll have some questions later on about the maroon print later in the agenda. And uh, thank you, opposition leader. And now I'm going to hand to Reverend Jeff. Hi again, folks. Uh, as ben Benny explained earlier on, uh, we begin by listening rather than with ideology. Uh, so there were more than 2,000 stories that formed the background to the Marine Print. So before we go to the detail of the Marine Print, we're going to drop into just five of those stories. And there are five people who are going to present to you, and they've all got, I think, 120 seconds or 119 seconds to share their story. Uh, so first up, I'd like to ask Ruth Delaney from West End in Brisbane to share. Uh, her story about uh, about pressure on life. Uh, so Ruth, thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Ruth Delaney. I'm 22 years old and last year I graduated from university with a Bachelor of International Studies. So after graduating, I found it really hard to find a job given that professional work experience was needed. And after applying at many places, I finally found a job at an international language school. I was really eager to start work in an exciting role at a great international education company. But pretty quickly, it all came crashing down. I had one week of handover and then one week on my own uh, in the new job. And then the coronavirus hit us. So many of the students immediately fled back to their home countries. Originally, I was supposed to start working on the 1st of March, but it was pushed back by a week for unrelated reasons. So I was employed on a full-time basis, but as I started after the March 1st cutoff, I didn't qualify for JobKeeper either. Um, very soon after, my hours were reduced by 60%. And we kept going, but the business couldn't sustain this. And then there was no work. So the likelihood of us going back in the near future is pretty dire and very uncertain. Um, my work do want me to come back eventually, but I need to wait until the international borders open and that's completely out of our control. Until then, I'm in limbo. 
So I've considered going back to uni to improve my job prospects because it's hard to find any entry level work at this point in time. But my proposed dual masters in international relations and international law is not approved for any Centrelink support either. So I feel quite stuck now and I'm left back at square one without the professional work experience that I intended to gain. So I now have to figure out a new pathway, which does leave me feeling quite anxious. And it's really not just me in this situation. I have a lot of friends graduating uni now and they're quite stressed about not finding any work. It's not the ideal position to be in as young adults at the beginning uh, of our Ruth. career. Yeah. Thanks. We, um, it's a moving story and I guess there are people in the, uh, in the Zoom conference and we all know someone whose employment has been uh, trashed by COVID. Um, so we wish you luck. Uh, we also need to listen to a couple of other stories. So I'm gonna move us on to Brooklyn O'Hearn, who is a year 12 student in Townsville and a leader with the Australian Youth Climate Coalition. Thanks Brooklyn and thanks again Ruth. Brooklyn. Hi everyone, I'm Brooklyn and I'm a year 12 student living on Bindle and Wulgarukaba country, also known as Townsville in North Queensland. Um, I'm also a straight state leader at the Australian Youth Climate Coalition. Last year, after years of drought, Townsville faced record-breaking floods. There was water everywhere, it wouldn't stop raining, and heaps of people filled sandbags and volunteered at shelters for those who were forced to leave their homes. Natural disasters like these floods are going to become more dangerous and more frequent, particularly for places on the front lines of climate change, like my home. Just one year after losing a few weeks of school from the floods, having to rethink and rework how we learn and are assessed, it happened again with coronavirus. Young people like myself are on the front lines of coronavirus and climate change. We're inheriting the consequences of decisions made by politicians and political parties before we're even old enough to vote. During the period of intense isolation, as you know, school went online. I've always been super dedicated to my education but sitting alone in my room for weeks made it very hard to stay motivated. Because of this, I began to worry about the effect that this would have on my grades and in the long run, my ATAR. When school went back, I finally started to worry less. Since my mom could keep a paintbrush in my hand, I've been making art, which then led to wanting to make a career out of it. But I realized that this would not create a stable future for myself. So I planned to become an art teacher. Then the federal government announced that fees for art and humanities courses will be doubling in price as opposed to more job relevant courses, forcing me to consider pursuing my dreams. Um, reconsider. So these are just some of the things that make me and so many of my peers feel insecure about our futures. I am an active part of my community. I'm really angry and I feel like I'm fighting for my future. Thank you, Brooklyn. Um, I hope you understand that we appreciate your story and that the people in this conference are also uh, fighting for your future. Our third story is from Pastor Kane Hardigan. He's a bush chaplain in the Kanamala area, uh, colloquially known as the Burke and Wills Frontier Services Patrol. Uh, he supports people in the bush from Morwen to Birdsville and from Baduri to Bolan. Uh, Pastor Kane. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Um, yes, Pastor Kane Hardigan, Outback Padre for the Kalamala Burke and Wills Patrol. I cover approximately 400,000 square kilometres of our Outback Queensland. In my role, face-to-face -face contact with remote, isolated people is paramount to their mental health well-being. The impact of COVID-19 on community and business in this region is deep. Many landowners, due to effect of up to 10 years drought, supplement their income by working for businesses in the communities. Most of these businesses also rely on the tourist trade to feed money back into the community. A couple of days ago, I drove into a town and the windows and doors of the main service station were boarded up. This has a huge impact on this small community. The roadhouse had the room for truck drivers to fill up with fuel and sit down and have a meal. This is no more. Tourists would stop off coming into town after being on the road for a few hours for a meal. This is no more. This roadhouse was a gateway into the community. It does not look good arriving into a town and observing a business boarded up. People may get the impression there is nothing in this town and keep going, which is humiliating. Another isolated town I visited was a publican who has had to close his doors due to the COVID. 
He states he is depressed and he is drinking heavily throughout the day. No tourists are coming through. The tourist trade is what keeps these people alive and well. After further speaking with him, he is now driving down to Brisbane to seek medical help. In Charleville alone, I know... Um, Pastor Kane, you've slipped onto mute. Uh, also, you've got about 10 seconds left to wrap it up. So if you go on mute, um, I feel terrible cutting off good stories, uh, but you've got about 10 seconds left if you can unmute. Thanks, mate. Okay. There's another story where his uh, wife had been put off work due to the businesses she worked for being closed. This had a huge financial impact on the family. And to top it off, his wife's father had died in Brisbane and she could not travel to be with her family. This is both a financial and emotional stretch to the limit. Thank you. Thanks, Kane. No worries. Uh, it's been good to see comments to the earlier story presenters in the chat. Uh, art teachers rock, for instance. It's amazing how many people start with art and move on. Lots of just leave it behind. Our fourth story comes from Moya Hughes. Uh, Moya is a retired teacher's aide and a life member of the United Workers Union. Moya. Hello, I'm Moya Hughes. As you said, I'm a retired teacher aide of 34 years. I'm a very active member of my union still and, the, and also in the community. When coronavirus hit, I did not want to go out to the shops or anywhere else. My husband would go and come back with limited items we needed. He could not find things we needed. I decided to go to the Woolworths store one day to get essentials. The store sign said, 20 minutes time limit, five items only. I went in quickly, concerned about catching COVID-19. I could not find things. Shelves were empty and I began to panic and became quite distressed and wanted to leave the shop. I was at the checkout and I came, became very confused and panicky. I fell to the concrete floor and blacked out. When I woke up and saw a ring of faces looking down at me, I was terribly embarrassed and panicked again. I was advised to go in an ambulance, but the fear of COVID-19 was greater than the pain. I called my husband, and even though he wanted me to go to the hospital, I said, no, I will go home and rest. So for the next 12 days, I suffered. I took painkillers. I had to crawl to the bathroom. The nurse who came to give me my flu shot was very worried. She organised with my doctor for me to go to get some x-rays. The results, a broken hip. I had to go to hospital, emergency in an ambulance. When we arrived at the Prince Charles Hospital, what a relief. All COVID testing was set up one end of the hospital, so there was no chance to catch it. I should have gone earlier. My thanks and appreciation go to the staff at Chermside Public Hospital. They are just incredible. They completely pacified me and I had uh, my 12 days there with them was actually very nice. It was almost like a holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Moya. Um, as a pastor, I've heard other stories of how COVID complicated the normal health crises that people have. And thank you for sharing your story with us tonight. Uh, you'll see in the chat how much people appreciate that story and you. Our fifth story is from an international student, um, Mushfakur Rahman. Apologies for what I've just done to butcher your name, mate. Um, Mushfakur is an international student at the University of Southern Queensland, and he's a leader in the Bangladeshi Association in Brisbane. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Uh, hi everyone, and I'm Mushfiq Rahman, and I'm an international student at the University of South of Queensland in Springfield. I study IT, and I took the hardest course in my last semester, which requires lab facilities and in-person instruction from the lecture. But when COVID-19 appeared, all the classes shifted to online. The students suffered a lot, as it is too hard to learn over Zoom and we felt that we could learn this course from YouTube. The quality of education was missing. 
the next semester will be online as well and the high tuition fees will remain the same as before so our big question is why we are going to pay the same tuition fees if we could learn this on youtube Queensland government has announced financial support for us through the university, but the eligibility is that you have to have less than $1,500 in your bank account. One subject is more than $1,500 and I have $1,700, so I missed out completely. Most of my friends are from subcontinent and the impact of COVID-19 is really bad there. Some students' parents have not been earning for the last three months and companies in our own home countries are sacking their employees. So how can we ask our parents for support when they have lost their jobs? I had three jobs and they all got cut. Some of my friends could manage this hard time by delivering food with Uber Eats, but many have had to learn how to drive and cycle. Uh, one friend uh, from Nepal who called me once in the morning and I was asking him if he if everything was okay or not, but he was shy. He couldn't pay his rent for the last two weeks and he was out of the growth service. He was crying and asking me, was it a wrong decision to come study? Thanks for everyone. Okay. Mushlika, thank you for that story. You speak for many. Um, and in the diversity of stories we've heard the range of stories or some of the range that QCA has been listening to. Uh, Benny's now going to move us through to presenting uh, the Maroon Pin plan. Thank you, Benny. Thank you. Thank you for those stories that highlight the personal cost and impact of COVID-19 and of many problems that affect our loved ones and families every day. Across our certified uh, member organization, we've come together, listen to the stories of our members, and the people we serve and negotiated a common sense, common ground position that can be uh, a blueprint for the approach that Queensland is going forward. <clears throat> but of course, why have a blueprint when you are in Queensland? So we have a maroon print. We will now invite two alliance leaders to read the maroon print for Queensland reconstruction. Leader Delary from Multicultural Australia and Peter Allen from Rail Tram and Bus Union. Thank you. As we recover from the ongoing COVID-19 crisis, there's never been a more important time for building a fairer, more sustainable and thriving Queensland full of opportunity for everyone. We need to capitalise on the strengths that have underpinned our response to the health crisis while responding to the problems this crisis has revealed. As organised civil society, we want to see this achieved in a way that responds to the needs of Queensland and Queenslanders. We endorse this maroon print for Queensland reconstruction and we call on the Queensland government and all political parties to agree to this vision and the practical principles. Our vision is of a Queensland reconstruction that is people-centred, fair, and creates greater equity and opportunity for those who most need it create jobs that are safe, secure and dignified for all Queenslanders. Responds to the threat posed by climate change with the strategies that protect our planet. Create decent jobs that provide dignity and strong communities that are united and safe. Build communities that are safe, connected, responsive and inclusive. Prioritize reconciliation between the First Nations and other peoples of Queensland, guided by the principles is the Uluru Statement from the Heart. Practical principles. Number one, government leads in getting Queenslanders back into good, secure jobs as quickly as possible through spending that stimulates the economy, ensuring no one is left behind by targeting support to vulnerable small businesses and vulnerable workers. Invest in the public services that have supported Queenslanders through the crisis, ensuring we maintain and improve on the high quality of healthcare, education, community, and emergency services. 
Three, create jobs and industries in climate solutions to ensure Queensland does its fair share to keep global warming under 2%, uh, 2 degrees and is as close to 1.5 degrees as possible. Climate jobs plan with specific targets and clear roles for government. Build big public renewable projects and make Queensland a renewable energy power, superpower. Plan for a thriving clean manufacturing industry in Queensland powered by clean energy. Engage in an ambitious program to build critical infrastructure projects to support a thriving Queensland well into the 21st century. And a strategic a strategy to support impacted workers into the jobs of the future. Number four, strengthen the capacities of Queensland rural and regional communities to be healthier economically and socially. Five, build the community infrastructure of the 21st century across Queensland, including A, increase funding in the network of independent, locally governed, place-based community neighbourhood centres, recognising their particular role in working with the most vulnerable communities, building social capital and thriving communities. B, deliver community health and care services through neighbourhood community centres, making health services accessible and close to the home, uh, building wellness, connections and resilience. And C, support and resource local mental health strategies and initiatives. Six, develop a new strategy for addressing social isolation and loneliness with the whole of person, whole of community and whole of government approach. Seven, ensure new Queenslanders are welcomed and supported in good times and in bad. Number eight, establish a commission with a broad community representation to develop and oversee the implementation of a plan for Queensland's future in line with this vision, principles and human rights frameworks. And number nine, ensure new legislative and police powers are reviewed in a transparent way and are proportionate, fairly enforced and time limited. This maroon train is now supported by organization representing over 2 million Queenslanders. It is a sensible middle ground that Queensland families and communities need. To see it realized, we need it committed to by all sides of politics. Tonight, we are asking the opposition leader to develop a plan that reflects this vision and practical principles. In the coming weeks, we have similar events asking the Premier the same thing. After that, we know that commitment of principle is important, but not enough. Our plan is to do five things between July and October. Number one, deep organizing to ground the Maroon in each of the traditions inside our organization and build support through relational conversation and actions. Two, Research action to develop a more specific ask that put flesh on the bones of this principle with positive solutions. Three, run civic academies to develop our members' understanding of the complex policy issues. Four, meeting with local MPs and candidates. Five, pre-election assembly with premier and opposition leader in September or October where we ask for the commitment on a specific ask and initiatives. Let's welcome the opposition leader, Deb Recklington, back to the virtual stage. Hopefully you'll be pinned to the screen. Uh, Deb Recklington, thank you for your early commitments and for engaging uh, with the Alliance uh, and for Christian Rowan's engagement over the last couple of years. Um, you've now heard our maroon print and the nine points of it and seen some of the stories that underpin it. Um, we and the two million Queenslanders who are associated with our member organisations uh, believe that these nine points are the broad middle ground uh, that Queensland families and communities need uh, to move forward. And we, we believe that you, we hope that you believe that as well. So I'm going to ask you two sets of questions. The first one is broadly. Uh, will you be developing a plan that reflects these principles? Uh, and I'll give you three minutes to answer that question. Then I'm going to walk you through uh, the nine points. 
Is that okay? Your three minutes starts now. Thank you, and thank you so much. Look, I'm, um, I've really enjoyed tonight's. So first of all, again, thank you for that. Um, I, I want to thank uh, the Alliance for the work you've done on the maroon print. And I'm actually really pleased to see that, you know, it aligns with so many of the LNP policies and the policies, in fact, that the opposition has been talking about for the last couple of years. Uh, look, um, the, the first principle of the Alliance is to create secure jobs. Uh, the underpinning of the, in, um, the economic plan for the LNP is all around securing future jobs, making sure that we have a big, bold, visionary plan to make sure Queensland can become a super um, economy once again. It's all about investing for growth, supercharging our regions, unleashing Queensland industry, and very importantly for me, securing the future of our children. Uh, look, many of the big, bold, visionary projects that we've already talked about um, go right into the plan of, of getting Queenslanders working again, dragging ourselves by the bootstraps out of this coronavirus recession. So one of the big, bold, visionary projects I want to talk to you about is the new Bradfield scheme, because it is all about getting people into work, making sure we're looking after our environment and we're creating enough um, for example, the new Bradfield scheme, I'm rushing because I don't have enough time, but the new Bradfield scheme will be Australia's largest dam. Uh, very excitingly, it will be able to produce 2,000 megawatts of hydroelectricity, uh, which will create enough power to generate 800,000 homes. Uh, so look, this is a really exciting part of our platform because we know it'll open up an area of Queensland uh, not just in, in the north, but it'll create industry for all of Queensland. But very importantly, we also want to make sure uh, that we are investing in renewable energy. And many of you have talked about that. And that is why I've already announced two years ago a change in the LNP's uh, plans around ensuring our government-owned assets, which will remain in our hands, uh, to be able to invest in those uh, renewable um, energy as well. I also am really keen to make sure we're reducing our, our health wait list. We've got to clear that wait list. We're improving education, of course. I've announced the phonics for year one students uh, and getting back to basics and making sure uh, that we are doing everything we can to um, ensure on, our communities not, not are... Cut really you off. You've got 30 seconds. Thank cool, thanks. In, Ensuring our communities do everything they can to work together to rid the scourge of ice and illicit drugs because I'm sorry, but the root of all evil in so many of our communities is the scourge of drugs. It's creating major mental health problems. Uh, it's creating joblessness, homelessness, and a really sad um, community. So that's very quickly uh, what I'm really pleased to be here tonight and, and just thank you very much. Thank you. There's some exciting ideas in that, and we're pleased uh, to have you share them with us tonight. I just need to walk you through, you've, you've touched on already some of our nine principles. So I think um, the secure jobs one is your home ground. So uh, that's, I think, a yes to our yes. principle number one. The question is about spending, stimulus spending. Uh, but the question is about stimulus spending as part of creating the secure jobs. Yes. Yes. Lots of it. <laughs> Question two, uh, thank you for your commitments about education and wait lists. Uh, question broadly is about investing in public services. A number of things mentioned. Uh, those services have supported Queenslanders through the crisis. So principle two. Yes. Thank you. Number three, uh, you've touched on renewable energy and your introduction of that into the, uh, the party platform. There's a number of headings under that, uh, creating jobs and industries and climate solutions that ensure Queensland does its fair share to keep global warming under control. Uh, are you committed to all five of those? Yes, but we won't be releasing a specific uh, climate jobs plan, but we are committed to the Paris Agreement. Uh, and I will be committed to releasing a jobs plan that does involve many renewable energy jobs, as I've just discussed. Okay, thank you. That, that's 85% of that one. So thank you. Uh, or 90. Or 90. 
Math wasn't my best subject. Uh, <laughs> principle four about the capacity of Queensland's regional and rural communities. I think you've said yes to that. Yes. Uh, principle five, community infrastructure. Um, committing funding to neighbourhood centres, which can be a backbone for local mental health care strategies. So funding for neighbourhood centres. Our members believe that's important. Are you yes. with us? Yeah. Strategy six, developing a new strategy for addressing social isolation and loneliness. Uh, this was what the Mount Gravatt Assembly that Christian Ryan went to uh, was about. Uh, are you on with that one? Yes, I am. And I'll be encouraging um, my team to work with the Alliance. Thank you. Right. Principle seven, ensuring that new Queenslanders, and I think by that we don't just mean Victorians, uh, that new Queenslanders are welcomed and supported in good times and in bad. Yes. Thank you. Apologies to Victorians. We welcome. I was going to say, including Victorians. <laughs> uh, principle eight: establishing a commission with broad community representation to develop and oversee uh, the implementation of a plan for Queensland's future that's in line with these principles and with human rights frameworks. Yes. That's great. Uh, number nine, uh, a comment on the legislative and police powers that have been brought in in this COVID time, uh, that the new powers, legislative and police, would be reviewed in a transparent way uh, to make sure that they're proportionate, fairly enforced and time limited. Yes. I think that's eight and three quarters out of nine. So thank you very much for that. Lastly, we want to make sure that the relationship we're building with you is ongoing. Um, I might have missed it, uh, but our ambition is to have a delegation of us meet with you a couple of times leading up to the next election. We know when that will be. Uh, you're fine for us to have a delegation meet with you a couple of times leading up to that assembly. Yes, if we can get it to work, yes. We will make it work. <laughs> It would also be good if you would give us a, uh, a letter to your members and candidates encouraging them to meet with us at local uh, pre-election and other, other gatherings uh, so that they know that you are supportive of our relationship with them as well. So uh, we need, we need a, a sort of sponsoring letter from you. Uh, well, yes, I encourage, um, I'll encourage all my members uh, to ensure they engage with a variety of groups. Thank you. Thank you, Opposition Leader. So we have everything on our list except that some of our members would like a specific climate jobs plan. Uh, you have something almost the same. Uh, so we're not quite there, uh, but we're pretty close. So thank you for that. That's a fantastic outcome for advancing a bipartisan consensus on Queensland's reconstruction. The next step, of course, is that you will continue your work of policy development uh, on a broad range of things, including issues that reflect uh, these principles. We will be doing uh, our own research and our own thinking, and we look forward to coming back to you in those meetings with you and your folk in our pre-election assembly with specific positive asks and negotiating about those specific asks relating to these nine broad principles. So thank you for engaging in that process uh, of accountability. And we look forward to working with whoever the future government of Queensland is uh, around these nine principles. Thank Can you. Can I ask? I think you might want to say another word. No, I just was going to say thank you. I didn't know whether I meant to mute. Can I ask everyone to take yourself off mute and to give Deb Frecklington, Leader of the Opposition, a round of applause for the commitment she's made tonight to bipartisan with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tonight we've shared the stories of our alliance, the stories that demand we do better. There are the stories that demand a fairer, more sustainable and thriving Queensland full of opportunity for everyone. We have commitment from Alliance members and leaders, and we have had uh, Deb 
Frank Clinton as leader of the Liberal National Party, commit to the Maroon Friends vision and practical principles for achieving this if elected. In community organizing, we believe that tonight and the commitment made are essential. We also believe they are not enough. What happened next is up to us. It is up to our ability to organize the strengths of the relationships in our churches, mosques, community organizations, union, ethnic associations, and charities. We look forward to working together in research action teams in our local districts and in coming together for our assembly with the premier and for our free election assembly. Congratulations and good night.